All right, I want to look at uh, solving systems of equations. We're going to start out with systems of linear equations, and then we'll look at um, how this can get extended uh, in a Math 112 class to be systems involving equations that aren't linear. Okay, so to start with, I'm looking at a topic that um, you may have already seen in previous classes. Um, not really a Math 112 topic, but we need to be reminded of how these things work. Uh, but you'll pick up on this pretty quick. Okay, we're going to solve a system of two equations with two variables. And we're going to do that using uh, substitution or elimination. Which one you use kind of depends on how the equations look. Okay, so if you have a situation where one of the variables is on a side by itself, then substitution really works really well. Okay, we also need substitution a lot of times when the equations are not both linear. Elimination is sometimes called the addition method. Ultimately, we're going to be adding the two equations together to eliminate one of the variables. It works good when none of the variables has an, a one out in front of it. They all have a number and the X's and Y's are on the same side. Okay. So here's how substitution works. Okay. What you want to think about is we're dealing with systems of equations. So we have lines that intersect are parallel or are the same line. Those are the three possibilities. And we're kind of assuming that they intersect and we're looking for that point of intersection. Okay, so at the point of intersection, the x from one equation should equal the x from the other equation. And if x equals 4y minus 7, then I, those are interchangeable. I can put 4y minus 7 in place of x. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the first equation, and right there where the spot for x is, we're going to put 4y minus 7. But then write down the rest of that first equation. Okay. And then what we've got is an equation that has just one variable in it. So now we're just solving a linear equation in one variable. So we'll distribute. We'll combine like terms. And then we'll continue the solving process by adding 14 to both sides. and then divide by 11, and we wind up with, with y equaling 1, okay? And then once you get that y equals 1, you're not finished because we're actually looking for a point of intersection. So we're looking for an ordered pair. So what you do is you go and you take one of the first two equations and you just plug in a 1 for the y. Okay. This would definitely be the best one to pick. It's already got x on a side by itself. So I'm going to go to where I have that equation. Let me do it over on this other side so I have room for the other thing we're going to do. So I go back to that equation. And then right where the y is, I'm going to put 1. Don't forget about the minus 7, and I get 4 minus 7, which is negative 3 for my x. Okay, so my y was 1 and my x was negative 3. Negative 3 first, because it's the x, y second. That should be the solution. Okay, and so these problems right here, I'm not going to necessarily show the check, but you can know whether you're right before you turn in the problem because you can go and plug in a negative 3 for the x and a 1 for the y and make sure it works in that top equation. All right, so that's the substitution method. It works good when one of the variables is easy to get on a side by itself. So it would not work well over on number 2. I would definitely choose to use elimination on that. So what you do is you look at your variables, and the idea, the big idea here is that we're going to try to eliminate one of the variables by making the numbers out in front be the same thing, just one positive, one negative. So I look at the 5 and the 2. So I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking about 
the fact that a multiple of those that would work would be maybe 10. And so if I multiplied the first equation by 2, that would give me a 10 right there in front of x. If I multiplied the second one by 5, that would give me a 10 in front of x. Thing is, I want 1 to be positive 10, 1 to be negative. It doesn't matter which one. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do um, negative 5 on that second equation. All right, so let's see what happens. Uh, there's lots of room for mistakes on this with positives and negatives. So please be real careful on that. Okay, so if I multiply through by two, I have to multiply everywhere by two. I'd get 10x minus eight y equals negative 12. Make sure you multiply both sides all the way through. You see that, that resulting equation, that new equation, is really the same set of ordered pairs as the original one, as long as you multiply all the way through. Okay, then I get a negative 10x minus 25y equals positive 45. Okay. And I set it up so this would happen. 10x minus 10x, they add up to be 0x or 0. And I get a negative 33y equals positive 33. So my x's were eliminated. I'm working towards getting y by itself. So I'll divide by negative 33, and I wind up with y equaling negative 1. Now, just like on the other one, I have to go back and take one of the equations and plug negative 1 in for y. I have to find x. So I go back to one of the equations. I'm just using the bottom one. Sometimes there's an advantage, but here I didn't think it really mattered. Plug in a negative 1 and then work that out. Okay, so I just plugged in the negative one, added five to both sides, and then I'm dividing both sides by two, and I'm getting a negative two. So I think my solution is negative two, negative one make sure you put them in the correct order and then don't forget you can check it by taking that and plugging it in to the first the equation you didn't use here so that would be the first equation and if it works there you know you're right okay all right now on problem number three i'm asking you to solve that one using both methods let me give myself a little bit more room on this goes down to the next page. Okay, so with the x and the y on the same side, I think most of us would probably use the elimination method. It would work really well. And that's sometimes called the addition method. Okay, so what you're going to do is add the equation so that one of the variables goes, goes away. And so on this one, I would look for a minute and, and see that, well, I could get rid of my x's by turning those both into 15s, right? I could have multiplied the top equation by 3, bottom equation by negative 5. Then once I do that, my x's would be eliminated, okay? I also could have multiplied the um, bottom equation by just negative 2, it looks like. And then that would give me positive 2 right there, and this is negative 2, and so then the y's would be eliminated. So I normally kind of look at it first and decide which would be maybe the least amount of work, but really it's whatever makes the most sense to you. So if I were using elimination, I would probably do this right here. So this is elimination. And so my, my first equation is 5x minus 2y equals 10. I'm not doing anything to it. But the second one becomes negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 14. Okay. All right, and I did that because then the negative 2y and the positive 2y add up to be 0, and I get negative x equals negative 4, and that's, that's an understood negative 1, so I can just divide by negative 1, and I will get x equals 4. Okay. And then once you find one variable, you just go back to either equation. So let's say I take this equation, 
and then I'm going to plug in a 4. So I get 12 minus y equals 7. I'm going to subtract 12. And so negative y equals negative 5. Divide by negative 1. And I wind up with y equaling 5. So it, that method right there, that's, that's elimination. Works good here. X and Y are on the same side. Okay, so that works good. I could have eliminated the X instead of eliminating the Y if I had wanted to. Okay. All right, now substitution on that also works, but you gotta you gotta make it easy for yourself. If you're gonna use substitution, you look at the two equations and you look for which variable would be easiest to get by itself. You don't want to have fractions that you're having to substitute. So if any one of the variables has a number by itself or virtually by itself, you know, like the Y has a one in front of it, then that's the one you'd want to use. Okay, so let me rewrite the system over here. And my plan is going to be to take that second equation and rearrange it so y is on the side by itself. Okay, now look, this is this is tricky if you haven't been dealing with math in a while. This is what I want by itself. So I can move the 3x out of the way, but the sign of that is a positive right now. So I'm going to add a negative 3x to move the 3x off of that side. Here's the mistake that's often made. There's a negative in front of that y. So we have negative y equals negative 3x plus 7. And negative 3x and a positive 7, they're not like terms, okay? So don't say 4x right there. All those beginning algebra skills, those are important. Okay. And so this is an understood negative 1, so I need to get rid of that. And I wind up with y equaling 3x minus 7. y equaling positive 3x minus 7. All right, now if you have been doing math a lot, you can rearrange these a little bit easier by moving the y. When you move it across the equal sign, it becomes positive. So like sometimes I look at it and I say, okay, I can move that over there and become y and move the 7 over here and become minus. So y over here and then 3x minus 7 over there. But anyway, here's kind of the algebra that, that would be saying that same thing. All right, so let me collect where we're at. So here was our first equation. Didn't change it. Our second equation is y equals 3x minus 7. All right, so here's where I'm at now, and I've rearranged it so y is on the side by itself because I'm trying to get ready to substitute. So I'm going to take and replace the y in the first equation with 3x minus 7. Don't forget to write down the whole rest of the first equation. But now you should kind of breathe a sigh of relief. All you got to do is distribute. Collect like terms and then work on simplifying or solving that equation. Subtract 14 and divide by that negative 1. And we're not going to get a different answer than we did before. We just got it by using a different technique. So on this one, I wound up finding that x is 4. All right, so now the best place for me to plug that in would be right there. Right, so I know y would equal 3 times the 4 minus 7. So y is going to equal 5. And then put it together as an ordered pair. Okay, so that's substitution. This is elimination. All right, now there's a, a handout that I posted under that course, uh, the area where you got your course materials. I, I'm posting 
you know, handouts there. I'm posting videos. Uh, one of them just kind of reminds you that not all lines intersect. Okay, that sometimes they're parallel. Sometimes they're coinciding. And if they're parallel or coinciding, you have kind of a strange result. Like intersecting lines have a point of intersection, and that's what you write as your solution. If they turn out to be like this, that's going to be no solution. And if they turn out to be like that, they intersect everywhere, you know, every point on the line. So there's infinitely many solutions. Okay. The solutions would be all the points on the line. Okay, but there's a formal way we sometimes write it. It's called set builder notation that says the solution would be the set of all ordered pairs such that, and then right here would be where you write the equation of the line. Okay, so I'll kind of show you how that works. Four and five turn out to be like that. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so what I would do on four is I wouldn't think ahead of time whether it's a special case necessarily. Uh, once you once you get used to this concept, you might be able to notice it is a special case before you get started. Like I notice how the second equation is a multiple of the first one on the left side, but not on the right. So because I've had tons of experience, I might notice that, and that would give me a way to know this has no solution. But you're going to probably approach it just by working on eliminating one of the variables. So you might say, well, I can turn the number in front of x into a 10, okay, and then I need it to be negative 10, really. Okay, so if you do that, your first equation becomes negative 10x positive 6y equals negative 42. And then I'm just bringing the second equation along. Okay, I'm expecting my x's to cancel, and they do. What I wasn't necessarily expecting was that, that the y's also cancel. This turns out to just be nothing left on the left, not an x, not a y. And I get a negative 21 on the right. Okay. All right, now hold your thought on that one. I want you to kind of compare what happens on these special cases before we decide how to answer them. All right, now on problem number five, one of the variables is already kind of by itself. So this would be one I would choose to use substitution on. So I would take the first equation, and right there where there is an x, I would put 1 half x minus 3 write down the rest of that equation. Don't miscopy. Okay. And then I have just x's, so I'd go ahead and distribute. I get a 3x. I can do 6 times a half on my calculator if I need to, but that turns out to be minus 3x plus 18 equals 18. Okay. So these cancel out completely. I don't have any variable left. I get just 18 on the left side, and on the right side, I get 18. Okay, so I get 18 on the left side. I should, let me not draw that line so you don't think I'm adding the two equations. So I get 18 on the left side, I get 18 on the right side. All right, so both of these are special results. I didn't get x equals something or y equals something. And you have to learn to interpret that correctly. So when you see this, you should be thinking, oh, lines were parallel. So no solution. Or you should be thinking, oh, this is a false statement. It can't have a solution. With this one, you might think, oh, you know what? I don't have intersecting lines. Lines are the same, really was just kind of camouflaged okay so there are infinitely many solutions okay. 
and then they may go on and say infinitely many solutions and then they may go on and use that special notation like this. Now a lot of times they'll go ahead and write the equation there, but you could actually take either equation and just write it here if they didn't, okay? And so what that says is the solution would be the set of all ordered pairs such that they satisfy this equation because all the points, basically it's saying all points on the line are the solution, are common, okay? All right, so those five problems kind of get at the basics of systems of equations. I'm going to stop the video here and then pick up with where the 112 stuff really starts.